Anyways, uh, what's your full name? Uh, my full name's Daniel Sullivan. Okay. And where do you live? So we live uh, up in Kula on Maui, uh, up on Haleakala Volcano. Oh, that's where you live. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah so, we love it. So how long have you uh, lived on Maui? Uh, we've lived on Maui just almost 18 years now. 18 years. So I ran uh, into you, and I was so happy I did. I, I, I sat next to your father-in-law on the way over to, uh, from Seattle to Maui, and it was amazing, amazing story. He's an amazing story that he has. And he told me about the store, so I went into Indigo, and I met you, and we started, I, mean, I was so impressed with your work. So tell me about your photography and your Kickstarter book. And yeah, tell me all about your story. Well, um, so my photography first started um, by traveling. Uh, I, I, was, I was traveling all over the world and working as a photographer. I was in uh, the Middle East for a while. I was in Syria. I was in uh, Egypt and Israel. And then I made my way to Pakistan and eventually Afghanistan to photograph there. Um, I didn't and, know. I didn't know this stuff. And, That's interesting. What's that? I said I didn't know any of this. Keep on talking. Yeah. So I, I was working as a photojournalist, and 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 one of the things that I was most interested in was the human spirit. So a lot of my photography revolved around different cultures and and people, um, and I was working on different projects that I was passionate about um, during that time. And my wife and I actually were living in um, Kabul, Afghanistan, when she got pregnant with our son, Tristan. And um, her parents had a house on Maui, and they invited us to come out to Maui to visit. And we absolutely fell in love with Maui, uh, and we decided to live here. And shortly after, I opened a photography gallery on the island. Um, and while we were here, you know, I, it took me a while to photograph the island. I really waited and, you know, I wanted to kind of photograph it in a different way, in a way that people hadn't, you know, really done before. And for me, my experience photographing vanishing cultures um, kind of led me into a connection with the Hawaiian culture and um, the landscape here and how it existed and connected to the Hawaiian culture because the land is so important to them. I want to, inter I want to interrupt. That story that you went around the world and collecting uh, from vanishing cultures, I've told that story like hundreds of times to my customers. <laughs> I think that's fabulous. So sorry, oh, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. Oh no problem. Yeah, my vanishing culture work. I had um, you know been photographing the eagle hunters of Mongolia, uh, the Highland tribes of Papua New Guinea. Uh, my first book, um, Tribes of the Omo Valley. I was photographing five tribes between Sudan and Ethiopia along the Omo River. Um, there was a dam being built, and uh, they were going to be displaced, a lot of the, the, the oh. cultures there, and I wanted to photograph their way of life before it changed. Yes. Uh, um, but, yeah, uh, it's been wonderful getting to photograph different cultures, and, and someday that will be a larger book, um, maybe my next book, actually. Um but yeah, it's that's been a, a wonderful project. And then, so I had photographed a lot of people for most of my career, and then I moved to Maui. And and Maui is is very much as anyone knows who's visited here about the landscape. And I really became fascinated with how the culture interconnected with the landscape. So in 2013. I decided to walk the entire coast of Maui. Um, we had this ancient road um, named the King's Highway, and it had built, been built around 600 years ago, and it was the only way to get around the island. It was the first road to circumnavigate an entire island in all of Polynesia. And so I, and it was lost. Not many people knew where it was. So I set out, and I walked the entire coast of the island, kind of in search of it, and I found it. And when I found the King's Highway, that story really took over. I mean, it went viral. People got really excited about it. And, and that became my, my, my last book, The Maui Coast Legacy of the King's Highway. So it was this 200-mile walk around the island and, and all the photographs of the coast of Maui. Um, and that was a wonderful book. And I've sold about 4,000 copies of that book now. Wow. 
And did you have like almost a spiritual connection spending that much time? Did you kind of because the islands are very intense with energy? There's a lot of energy on the island for sure. Yeah, no, it's definitely a connection to what we call the Aina, which is the sacred land. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so since the, the publishing of my first book, I've really been drawn deeper to the um, to the mountains of Maui and to the reefs and, and kind of inland. So um, this book is Maui, Malkata Makai, um, which is more an exploration of the, um, you know, the mountains and the ocean of Maui. Interesting. You've gone through a lot the last couple of years on the islands. Um, how has the, uh, what you call it, the COVID, the COVID, how did that affect the island? Because I assume that you were on the island during that time period. Yeah, it was, well, so that's where this book kind of began. Oh, really? I, um, okay. So we, in March of 2020, uh, the island of Maui shut its doors to the outside world. Uh, we, uh, flights were closed, um, tourists weren't welcome. And, I mean, we were, you know, we were completely isolated out here in the middle of the Pacific. And I, um, you know... I lost my gallery, which we'd had for around 17 no way. years. And, um, no I way. Was, yeah. And, and it so was beautiful. Beautiful. I was, what's up? Your gallery is beautiful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was a wonderful space and we loved it. But um, so, yeah, after that happened, I was kind of, you know, wondering what to do with myself. And I started just kind of exploring the mountains here we have these amazing mountains and, and and you know 90 something percent of maui is untouched i mean there there's huge swaths of rainforest and mountain that nobody's even nobody explored. knows no and so i started taking these hikes and, and and following rivers upstream and um you know summiting the mountains here and and then I started, you know, diving in the ocean and exploring our reefs and going further and further out. And it, it just became this really fascinating project um, to explore the island deeper, where the first book was all about the coast. This book was Malco, which in, Ma in Hawaiian means mountain, and, and Makai is ocean. So this is from Malco to Makai. It, it was more uh, a deeper exploration of Maui. And... Um, yeah, it's been it's been an amazing project for me, and it really has it's gone deep, and and uh, it hasn't always been easy. But I'm I'm excited that we're finally launching the Kickstarter. We launched it almost it was on Tuesday of this week. We launched it really and it's been going Tuesday. Really well, okay, so I'm I'm super excited about the project. Well, I'm excited to well just to let you know I have dreamt for years about owning some of your work. And so I was thinking this year, okay, you can afford it, go ahead and start buying some. And I'm thinking about that. And your Kickstarter pops up in my, uh, my inbox, I'm on your email list, and I go, that is so cool. And I think to myself, gosh, you know, you're out there doing interviews of all your customers, Bill. Why don't you see if he's interested for interviews? So I'm so excited that you, you know, number one, that I can be a part of this because I want to support it myself and that you're giving me this interview. So thank oh, you thanks, so Bill. much. I appreciate that. No, it's, I mean, some people's work is so amazing. So if anyone hasn't seen your work, I'm going to post a few uh, photos that you give me permission to do. But what is your website? Um, so my website is danielsullivanphotography.com. So that's got my photography, my fine art photography on it. Okay. And then my other website is uh, danielsullivan.tours, and I do photography expositions and oh. photography tours here on Maui where I take people out and teach them how to be a better photographer, and we go explore the island together. So I have a tour website, and then I have one that has my fine art on it. And what's your Kickstarter? So the Kickstarter, if you go on Kickstarter and then you just search Maui, Malka, M-A-U-K-A, to Makai, M-A-K-A-I. So mm -hmm. Maui, Malka to Makai is the name of the book. Or you can just search my name, Daniel Sullivan, and it'll right. bring up the book. 
You know, it's it's funny because I take a lot of photos. I'm on the island a lot, and I take a lot of photos, and they're not good. I mean, I'm just total amateur, but I'm having fun, so it doesn't matter. But I post those. But I go around my neighborhood, and I'm approached all the time, and they always say the same thing because I posted quite a few different things. We love your Hawaiian photographs. So the audience, if you're listening, if you love Hawaiian photographs, go to Daniel's website and go to the Kickstarter because it's like his level is so intense. It's just the colors and, and especially like like the, the turtles. You, I knew that you you spend so much time just to get one photograph. How much time do you normally spend on a photograph? Day? I mean... I shoot every single day of my life here. Oh, you do? Um, and so I'm out at sunrise and sunset most days. And um, I'll return to a place over and over again because the light is always so different. I mean, we have such amazing lighting here yes. on the islands. Um, yes. And, you know, it's so special that you can actually catch a sunrise and a sunset in the same day. You know, it's very rare to be in a place that you can do that. Really? So. Yeah, so we can go to the east side of the island and watch the sun rise over the ocean, drive to the west side and watch the sun set over the ocean. And you can, you know, that's, that's a few hours drive. It's, it's pretty special. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, well, I know everyone is, including me, interested in you're out there, uh, you know, shooting the whales, okay, and you're on a kayak and tell us what happened. Well, during the making of this book, um, you know, I was photographing the whale migration. So uh, every year we have about 15,000 whales, between twelve and 15,000 whales 15, that visit Maui to give birth and to mate. And they, they travel here all the way down from Alaska. And it's a beautiful time to be on the island. Um, it starts in November and it runs all the way to March. And um, so I, during that time, I try to be on the water as much as possible. Um, I photograph the whales uh, as often as I can. And I've spent, you know, years and years on the water here. And um, so we had gone out February 2nd. I was with my son, Tristan, who oh. actually turns 17 in, in two days. Okay. And um, so we had gone out kayaking together. And um, it was a really nice day. It wasn't too rough. Um, we set out. It's, we have a two-man orange kayak and so we set out and um we paddled out about a mile and we saw our first pot of whales and they were really close to us it was it was a really nice encounter and we paddled out uh, you know a bit further and um we saw some dolphins jumping around so we kind of paddled towards them and uh out of the water came first uh an escort whale and then a baby whale and a mother whale and they came right up to the boat i mean so close that you know we were sticking the camera in the water get just really beautiful shots um but the energy was different than i had experienced before with whales it was almost they were really close to us but there was a lot of activity it was it was it was a little it was a different energy and so we had this amazing encounter where the mother had kind of brought the, the baby whale up to the boat almost to, to show us the baby and the and the escort whale was kind of hanging around too and um right after i had taken a shot i got hit from below and it was almost as if i'd been hit by a truck i mean it was this huge impact right underneath my legs oh my god and it drove me out of the water about three feet high. oh my and god i looked down at what was happening on either side of my legs was the mouth of this great white shark oh so my god he was on both sides of the kayak biting down right underneath my legs and How i terrifying you know, the water streaming off his his mouth his face knocked us out of the water and then his teeth sunk into the boat. So as he fell back, he was as big as our kayak. As he fell back in, he pulled the whole kayak back over on top of himself. So I fell on top of the shark. I'm still holding my paddle somehow. And I start to hit him away from me and my son. Tristan, my son, um, when it happened, had actually thought that the escort whale had breached. And oh, had hit yes. us. 
Yeah. He was in front of the boat and his back was turned. So he went into recovery mode and all our camera gear and everything was in the water, our dry bag, all of it. He went to go grab my camera housing that was floating, you know, several feet away. And at this time, I'm hitting the shark and I'm yelling at him. I'm like, Tristan, it's a shark. Get back in the boat. Well, he So oh. he has no fear because he just thinks it's a whale. Yeah, he hadn't seen the shark yet. He had just fell in the front of the boat, had swam to get the camera. Oh, and wow. so he, the shark dips down and we grab the boat to flip it over. But the shark has been such a huge hole in the bottom of the boat. When we go to sit in the boat, it's it's not steady anymore, and the boat flips over again. Uh, and we're back in the water, oh and God. the shark's swimming around us. So the next time we go to flip it over, we actually see the size of the bite mark in the bottom of the boat, and the water streaming into the boat, and the boat sinking. We get in the boat, and the boat actually sinks below the water level. And at this point, I say to Tristan, you know, we're, we're going to have to swim for it. And I um, I grab my phone out of the dry bag to try to call 911 or, you know, try to get some help. And we take off swimming. And Tristan was still actually holding on to my camera housing. And so what we did was we swam, we sprinted as fast as we could, swimming in the water as fast as we could. My phone actually died as I was trying to call 911. And we held on to, my camera housing has two handles, so we're holding on to the different sizes of the housing so we'd stay close together. And if the shark came back, I was going to put that camera housing between us and the shark because it's, you know, it's got metal on it. And it was at least something besides our bodies to, to protect us with. So we swam as fast as we could, and about a quarter of the mile into our swim, a fishing boat passed us, and, and, and we shouted for help. They slowed down. They saw our boat in the water, and they took off, and they didn't stop. And it was the most disheartening moment of the entire day because, oh, nice. you know, we needed help so bad, and this, so bad. this boat took off. And so we we kept our we kept swimming in, and eventually we, we did make it into the shore, and we actually we landed on the cliff, and we actually had to climb up the cliff because we, there wasn't a beach where we came in. Uh, but that was okay, and then we we had to you know walk back down to the car, and the entire thing was incredibly traumatic. I mean, we uh, I didn't sleep for weeks from the PTSD of the entire encounter, um, and the story itself it, it went viral. You know, everybody wanted to to hear the story. We did I think fourteen interviews by the end of it, and we we told our story to everyone, and it was so rare. Uh, to have a great white shark, what had happened was when we, we talked to the scientists and the marine biologist about it was what they assumed was the, the, the whale, the baby whale we had seen was so small, it had just been born. And there was actually, there was a lot of stuff in the water, yes. like little clotlets and stuff. It had just been born and, and the, the shark was all riled up from the, the afterbirth in the water. So when he swam up and, and, and struck us, he was going after the baby whale. He wasn't going after us. Oh. But our kayak was the same size as the baby. Yes. And it just, by the baby's luck, it hit us instead. And the mother and the baby and the escort whale swam away. And the shark stayed with us. So, um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't like the shark was trying to get us. The shark was doing what sharks do. And we just were in the wrong place at the wrong time. But... Um, you know, in all my years of living on this island and, and, and you know, hundreds of thousands of times in the water, I, I'd i never, I mean, I've seen sharks, but I'd never had any aggressive activity from a shark ever. So it was just so random. And, you know, that day went from being this beautiful, really magical day to being this, this moment of chaos. And, you know, for me, when I woke up, the next morning after it had happened, I, I really kind of thought to myself, wow, I I probably shouldn't be here. Like this no, moment, no, you know, it was, absolutely. it felt very like a, a, a near death experience. And it was like, I was given a second chance almost. And it was wonderful. Like I would really, you know, I, I kissed all my children and, you know, I was so grateful to, to still be here a rebirth. and it made this, this book too, like coming out with this book, all the more important to me to tell this story and, you know, to, to, to do this. So it's, it's been a really interesting, uh, year for sure. Um, a couple of years, uh, and I'm really excited to kind of have this book finally, you know, launched and 
and hopefully fund it. That's that's incredible because, see, uh, when I got your uh, your email, I didn't know anything about this, and then I went, you know, just everyone, you know, check out the page type thing, and I saw a picture on the kick is it, it's on the Kickstarter page, yeah, the boat, yeah, and yeah. your son, and I looked at that, and that wasn't like a little bite. He was biting the entire boat. Yeah, no, it was the tire. It was literally uh, his bite when he hit us and bit into the boat underneath me. Was I could he was on both sides of my legs. Wow! And it, it's a big two man kayak. Um, yeah, no, he was huge, like twelve feet. He was a huge shark. Um, so yeah, we were really lucky to get out of there. Wow. Wow, that. But I like how you said, you know, you've been in the water hundreds, you know, thousands of times. Yeah, because that's part of your lifestyle when you're there. So yeah, wow. yeah, and it's it's so rare, you know. What happened to us was just freak. We were just, like I said, wrong place, wrong time. Um, it was it was amazing. They uh, so the DLNR I uh, hear uh, went out in jet skis to to clear out the waters and to get everybody out of the water after the shark attack, like they do. And, they found our boat, and so they, they pulled the boat in, and it ran on the front page of the newspaper the next day. <laughs> it did? Uh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, with the shark bite, the photo of the shark bite, and you know how big that shark must have been. It was pretty crazy. Well, the good news is, is I saw the photograph of the whale and the baby and that you have on, on, on the page, and that was so beautiful. I yeah, mean, that was that was amazing that we actually got to keep that image. Exactly, the, exactly. Because the yeah. last thing on your mind is saving the camera. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, that it, we we always say as photographers, you know, every every picture tells a story. That one definitely had a story behind it. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's great. So uh, Daniel, I'm gonna start, uh, you know, uh, ending this and uh, summing up. Do you have anything else to share with people about the islands, about the culture, about you know being in the water, anything like that? Go ahead and you know, share from your heart. Well, I mean, one of the things, you know, so when I finished my first book, um, I, I really had a deep connection with Maui and with the culture here. And I'd met so many Hawaiians and, 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 and learned so much about the island. And, and, and that connection's really grown. And... and now that I do photography tours here, it's been wonderful to be able to share that with people and to get to, to, to teach people about the Hawaiian culture and about the island and the history. And so when I do photography tours, it's more than just photography. It's also culture and it's history. And that's been a really wonderful experience for me, getting to share that with visitors here. Because people, um, people love that. They love that. Yeah. No, it's great. And, and you know, it, it's all about going and, and, and one of the, the best lessons that I ever was given was, was, was don't just go far in life, but go deep in life. And, and, and living here on Maui has really been about exploring my backyard. And, and, you know, I traveled all over the world to photograph these Spanish cultures. And my deepest, most important project here has been Maui and the culture here. And so... Mm-hmm. You know, it's been this exploration of going deeper and deeper in these layers of, of, of history and culture and spirituality here on the island. Um, so that's been really wonderful for me to, to learn and, and go deeper in. Wow. Wow. That's, gosh, just uh, what, what a great way to sum it up because I myself have been deeply, deeply affected by the islands. It's it literally changed my life. So, well, thank you, Daniel. I'm going to uh, put the links below uh, in the, um, on the channel, and I'll post this uh, next, next week. So if anybody wants to do that, and uh, I'm just going to wrap up this interview, and then uh, I want to talk to you about me supporting it. <laughs> so, so anyways, thank well, th- thank you for your time, Daniel. And uh, once again, your website is? Uh, my website is danielsullivanphotography.com, and then the Kickstarter project is Maui Malka to Makai. Okay, awesome then. Thank you very much. I'm going to turn Thanks, off Will. the recording then, and we can chat more. Okay. Okay.